I also have a gaming channel here on YouTube. How about that? Uh, hi folks, today I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience with Fedora 33. I've done a few distro reviews on this channel um, and a few of you have actually asked me about Fedora 33. I've been trying it on that machine uh, back there, uh, which is a very, very low end machine. I would be doing like a, str a, scre a streamcast for you uh, using like OBS and all that kind of stuff, uh, but I actually kind of forgot how old this machine is. Like this is, that's a really old laptop back there. Now I, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I've kind of um, not really enjoyed my experiences with the GNOME desktop as of late, so I tried with XFCE and I must admit I had a great time. So the the thing about Fedora 33 is that, I mean, this is not going to be a particularly interesting review. It, you know, Fedora is as Fedora does. This is um, another in a long line of wonderful distributions that Fedora has put out. Um, and I, I had a really good time with it, especially with XFCE. Now, there is something that I do want you guys to note with XFCE is that it doesn't come with the shiny like GNOME Software Center. Uh, if you want to add things like RPM Fusion, so like the non-free repository, or if you want to, um, you know, work with flat packs and stuff like that, I would generally recommend that you go straight to the command line with that um, rather than faffing around with the GUI. Um, so what I did with that machine is that I, I did everything using the DNF command, which is basically a drop-in replacement for apt. So if you're used to using apt on Debian-based distributions like Ubuntu and Linux Mint, uh, or Debian, of course, th then you'll be perfectly uh, happy with the DNF command. Works basically the same way. Um, so I, I just generally focused on the command line and it made it a lot more comfortable to switch from a Debian-based distribution to, to a Fedora-based distribution. I think I would have had a lot more pain if I tried to get it working through a GUI of some variety. Um, the, the DNF installer they have there sort of does the job well enough, but it's a bit like Synaptic Package Manager, but fundamentally I just ended up resorting to the command line. That's where I felt most comfortable. That's where it seemed to be at its strongest. So it doesn't have GNOME Software Center. I'm sure you could probably install it if you if you wanted to, but at the end of the day, the command line tools for, for DNF, for Flatpak, for uh, for Snaps, whatever you want to use, um, it's great. The repositories themselves are actually pretty well furnished, so I found it a, a rare occasion to actually have to go into the, to Flatpaks or Snaps or anything, but it's nice to know that they're there. And things like flat um, Flatpaks and Snaps, and of course App Images, which I am a big fan of, uh, they do make switching from distribution to distribution um, substantially more painless because uh, you do already know that, that there is software available and it generally works. Like I don't think I've had any major problems with these, you know, uh, containerized applications uh, not, you know, working on one distribution and not working on another. I'm sure there have been cases, but, uh, and I know that when snaps were newer, there were issues with snaps being cross-platform, but I think nowadays, at least in my experience, it seems that um, they all work uh, well enough, uh, which is good. Uh, but that being said, like, yeah, it was mostly the Fedora repositories that I'm using. The one big thing about Fedora 33, which everyone is talking about, is that it now uses ButterFS, um, the XFCE respin, which is the one that I used, of course, uh, had installed with ButterFS out of the box as part of its default disk partitioning, um, and I've had zero issues with it. In fact, in fact, what's quite interesting about it is that I don't think Fedora gets enough credit how well this runs. I can't, I can't, I can't remember the stats on this, but it's like it's a rickety old laptop. This is this is very very old. This is like five more than five years old. And Fedora flies pretty fast on it. I don't think Fedora gets given enough credit uh, for being a distribution that runs really well on on um, uh, on low end hardware and older hardware. Um, it might be because uh, GNOME is their their flagship version, uh, and, and GNOME can be heavy. I understand that they've been you know slimming it down a little bit, but XFCE works wonderfully on it. Wonderfully on it. Like I was really happy with it. Um, it was well enough to set with a theme. Um, one of the default themes was was you know suited me down to the ground, so I didn't really feel the need to customize it any any more beyond that. Um, I had I had zero issues with it on that machine. The only issue I had with it when I ran it on this machine, the machine that I'm recording with now, is that um, the Nvidia drivers uh, kind of. Uh, this is not a Fedora problem because I have the same problem with um, Fedora's, um, not Fedora, with Ubuntu uh, 2010s as well, is that the NVIDIA drivers, the proprietary ones, 
just they're not as good as they used to be like i've noticed regressions in there i've noticed that um the, the, them sort of slipping back in quality and i know that with the newest round of of, of the, the the latest version of the kernel uh that there are issues with nvidia as well um i'm not entirely sure about the the mechanics of the situation but as as far as i understand it um yeah like uh, I find myself uh, not having the best time with the NVIDIA drivers on any distribution. That's the only issue I had on Fedora, which I also did have on, on Ubuntu, which I think I probably failed to mention in my reviews because they came along a little bit later. Um, generally speaking, rolling back to an LTS of, of Ubuntu or something based on an LTS of Ubuntu sort of fixed that, but I'm sure I could probably, if I was willing to faff around, roll back the NVIDIA drivers. I've got to admit the thought has been going through my question about how well I could do on, on the NVIDIA Nouveau drivers, the open source drivers uh, that work with NVIDIA cards. And if anyone uh, out there does use the Nouveau drivers, please let me know how you, uh, for the with NVIDIA cards, please let me know how your experience is. Should I try it? Should it be like a challenge? Go a month with, with the Nouveau drivers. How well do they work? Um, I'm pretty sure, if I'm completely honest, that my next graphics card, which probably is quite far off, it's, it's going to be a AMD. You know, with 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 the streaming games now not requiring the heaviest of of cards, and, and if I can stream games on a Nouveau driver, uh, when I say stream games, I mean like Stadia and GeForce Now, because I play most of my high end games. That tends to be where where I go. Uh, I was playing Battle for Wesnoth on that laptop. There works fine on that laptop, and that laptop's like friggin' old. Like I can't even tell you. I can't. You know, it's it's like it's got like a hundred. Um, Oh, I did upgrade it with a solid a solid state hard drive, so maybe that's something that works well in its favor. Um, maybe it works, you know, maybe the ButterFS file system gels really nicely with the uh, solid state hard drive, and that's where some of the performance comes. But like, I mean, really, like that that's that's impressive. That's impressive. Um, how well how well it works in that regard, and I'm going to probably try some other distributions on it to see whether or not that's a across the board Linux thing, or whether or not that's a something specific to Fedora, maybe it's something specific to ButterFS, I don't know, but all I know is I was impressed with how well Fedora worked. Um, you know, I would have done, the thing is, I would have done a screencast of that machine if the CPU was up to it, um, but OBS, when I when I installed and opened up OBS, OBS was like, you ain't, you ain't recording on this, lad. You ain't recording on this, this is too slow. Um, so I've, I've included some screenshots, uh, but really... I mean, it's an XFCE desktop. What do you want? What do you want? Um, so yeah. Uh, so my advice for anyone wanting to try it out is, especially with the remixes, do the, the command lines easy enough. I would I would stick with that. And um, yeah, and and as about it, really. Um, I, I that that was a fresh new install, but in my experience, Fedora upgrades work. Have, have, well, uh, Fedora upgrades have never failed me. So, other than the uh, issue in Nvidia, which I'm not going to attribute to Fedora, because quite frankly, I think Nvidia have just dropped the ball lately on it. I think uh, maybe it's a legal issue, maybe it's a technical issue. I, I honestly, I don't know. Um, but honestly, uh, considering it's a cross distribution thing, I'm I'm laying that blame squarely on Nvidia. Uh, I believe I believe there's a meme that may very well be appropriate for this uh, for this situation, but um, perhaps not best on this channel. Eh? So um, yeah, wish I had more interesting things to say about it, uh, but I kind of feel now with Linux distributions the way they are. Honestly, I think the difference from one Linux distribution to another uh, in terms of practicality is is melting away, and that's a good thing because it allows you to choose a Linux distribution based on your uh, philosophy, uh, your you know your software politics or you know how like whether or not you you know do you prefer red hat as a company over over canonical or ibm um well ibm is you know for, basically yeah you get to choose it based on other um other factors other than uh whether or not it's it just runs as well um it, I think it's a little bit of a shame that there aren't more distributions based on Fedora in the same way that they're based on Ubuntu. My suspicion for that is simply that Fedora is such a fast-moving distribution. Um, any distribution that bases itself on Fedora would have to be like um, w would have to be also as almost as fast-moving and have something really good on top of that to make it to make people sort of sit up and pay attention uh, there have been fedora distributions in the past where i've up upgraded like the day of day zero or, or when i've installed it uh, day zero and there have been some minor issues which 
generally quite promptly get patched out. Um, and some people even on this channel have, have suggested in the comments that they stay a version behind with Fedora. So, so there might be some people in the comments who have upgraded to Fedora 32. Um, and now that it's all patched and all the all the teething issues have been work, worked out. Um, and that's sort of one way to, to go about it. But this particular issue with Fedora 33, I, I, I had zero issues other than, than the video on. It's good. Solid distribution. I think I feel like this is the same dis review whenever I come back to Fedora. It's good. If you want something that's not Debian-based, give it a whirl. Um, it's got new versions of all you know the applications in the repository um you can even treat it as a rolling distribution kind of like the upgrade process is in my opinion and in my experience reliable enough that it's just like yeah just install fedora every time there's a new release just up uh, uh, you know up, just do the up upgrade command bang you know it, it jobs are good as they as they say around these parts um yeah so and and, and just think of it as a rolling release don't think of it as something that you have to nuke and pave every six months. Uh, I tend to do that because I kind of like to, to clean the slate a little bit, but um, you know, I've got a good backup scheme and it's not too difficult to, to load my old stuff back onto something like that. Um, I use Sync Thing, for those of you that, that wonder, for, for the real-time backup. I, I use some other stuff on a you know in, uh, scheduled basis to, um, to double backup. But yeah, for my, for my immediate real-time um, backing up of stuff, are you sync thing? Uh, I switched over from Dropbox because Dropbox is not so good. Got some corrupted files. They couldn't explain that. Anyway, I'm just rambling now, but thank you very much for joining me. Let me know your experiences with Fedora 33 down in the comment section below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Toodaloo. If you'd like to support the content on this channel, I have a LibraPay account. It's like Patreon, but open source.